At the outset, I would like to thank Namrata for making me part of this course. The topic is glue and dalk in microbial keratitis, no financial interest. The glue commonly we use is the cyanoacrylate and used for clinical cases when during the course of treatment of infective keratitis, there is thinning and there is a perforation. Like in this case, you can see it's serial positive. The glue polymerizes on contact with fluid. So if you continue to have seepage from the perforation, uh, the glue application can be unsuccessful. So for this, what we do is we place an air bubble in the anterior chamber using a 30 gauge needle. Once you place the, the air bubble, then you have the surface can be made dry. You can see that uh, now there is no seepage of fluid. It's important to uh, debride all the surrounding loose epithelium or exudate that's kind of sticking with the uh, around the ulcer otherwise the glue will not get a firm hold and the application of glue there you can see we are removing all the uh, you know loose epithelium and the debris sticking the glue is applied on a small uh, circular disc which can be refined with a two millimeter punch and then you can apply that disc onto the cornea that ensures that your anterior surface is pretty smooth Although the glue can be applied directly, but that tends to leave a slightly irregular surface. Then you can either leave that disc behind or remove it and then place a bandage contact lens. So that's how you take a cotton swab, cut it, and then apply some ointment at the tip. And then you can pick up the, the disc of plastic that you have created with the punch and then apply a little bit of glue and then bring it to the point of application. So the same patient you can see in the post-operative period, there is good healing. Uh, the glue does bring in some vascularization and uh, you can see the post-operative patient. This patient went on to have 6 8 inversion and did not require a corneal surgery. However, in advanced cases, you need to do a surgical procedure. Commonly, we used to do penetrating keratoplasty when there is no response to maximum medical therapy, rapid progression, or the tectonic integrity is compromised. Let's look at the rule of uh, anterior uh, lamellar keratoplasty. The advantage is that you retain the host endothelium, thereby you can have long-term survival of the graft and no need to use long-term steroids. The disadvantage could be that if you leave behind the residual stroma with the infective material, there can be increased risk of uh, recurrence of the infection. Uh, the advantage is you are doing the surgery in a closed globe, so the intraoperative complications associated with the open globe can be minimized. So there have been some report. This is the earliest report that we saw published back in 2002. But they were using it for cases as early as you know seven days after the uh, medical therapy. Uh, we know that for fungal keratitis, the on an average you need to give therapy at least for 35 days or more before you can see a complete resolution. Uh, they had mostly filamentous. So I think the, sub the successful outcome could be the superficial nature of the fungal infection in all these eyes. Uh, this was a paper published from Italy from Dr. Sanicola's group. They also performed DALK in eyes with uh, fungal keratitis. Here also the infection was not exceeding 300 microns. So basically in the anterior half of the cornea, they performed big bubble in, uh, in 74% of the eyes so that you go all the way up to the predecimates layer, removing most of the stroma. They had a good outcome and they did not have any graft failure or rejection during the follow-up period. Another paper uh, from China and from Bascom Palmer, where they looked at performing big bubble DALC in deep fungal keratitis. So the cornea was almost four fifths of the cornea was involved in the fungal keratitis, and they performed big bubble, uh, which goes all the way to predecimates layer. They did have a DM perforation in two eyes, but they continued the surgery by placing an air bubble. They had favorable outcome, only about recurrence in two eyes of 8.7%. Uh, this is one of their cases where they show there is significant amount of central visual axis involvement where the DALC was performed successfully. A nice study from uh, Singapore National Eye Center by Donald Tan, where they compared therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty to therapeutic DALC. Uh, both eyes achieved a similar therapeutic success. However, the full thickness therapeutic keratoplasty, when they had recurrence, uh, almost 50% of them had poor visual outcome. The Best corrected visual acuity and the long-term survival, the therapeutic DALs outperform the therapeutic keratoplasty. Some of their cases, they show post-operative photographs showing the good outcomes after the lamellar graft. And this is one case where they showed there was a lot of exudate present within the interface, which was sterile. And finally, with medical therapy, they, the graft finally cleared, leading to good outcomes. 
So don't go by the early uh, post-op. You have to differentiate between a sterile hypopion and a recurrence of the infection. This is again for acanthamoeba keratitis. We know that medical therapy can sometimes be ineffective. So in this case, uh, after between 30 to 60 days of medical therapy, when the ulcer was not responding and it was involving only half the uh, corneal thickness, they performed a uh, dalk out of which they were pre-decimatic, that is a big bubble dalk in four and near decimus dissection in seven. And they had good outcomes in all these eyes. Uh, I also had a similar patient where non-responsive to acantamoeba keratitis. Uh, we went ahead. We were planning to uh, do a penetrating keratoplasty uh, because it was going quite deep. But then we decided to try and attempt a DALT procedure. As we injected the air, we did get a bubble, but we were not sure as to what type of bubble we achieved because the whole stroma had become emphysematous. So after debulking the anterior stroma, when we looked at it, we can see here the, what the sharp margin, unlike the dense margin, what you see with the type 1 bubble. So this was a type 2 bubble. We uh, released the speculum, make the eye very soft, injected some cohesive viscoelastic. Knowing that a type 2 bubble, the decimates is very fragile and can easily rupture. Uh, so, But we were able to maintain the intact SMS membrane, complete the removal of the anterior stroma, and then place a graft and secure it in place. So when you have, when you are de-roofing a type 2 bubble, you have to ensure that there is minimal uh, upthrust, and you have to repeatedly release aqueous to keep the eye soft and make sure that your instrument does not come in contact with the decimus membrane. So this patient had a good visual outcome. You can see there is good resolution, but the uh, medical therapy has to be continued post-operatively because there will be some residual infection that's left behind. And if you don't give the anti amoebic therapy, the chances of recurrence can be high. There's another case with not responding to acanthamoeba keratitis that was successfully managed using that. Similarly, microsporidial keratitis, we know that we don't have an effective therapy. So DAL can also be used in such cases to perform the surgery. So this is again a patient with non-responsive treatment where a big bubble DAL was performed. So you can see that a successful type 1 bubble. So the advantage of big bubble is it removes all the residual stroma and thereby it can eliminate all the infected tissue from the cornea. This is again a patient who had a smile performed and then ended up with an infective keratitis. So here also with a big bubble DALP was performed with a good post-operative outcome. This is again, once the infection is resolved, you can sometimes have corneal thinning perforation, which was managed with the blue and amniotic membrane. Patient was recommended for a full thickness graft. We did a DALP and this is how the patient did. Despite having a two millimeter perforation, a DALP can be performed with good outcome. So in conclusion, therapeutic keratoplasty may be essential to eradicate infection. But uh, the advantage of DALP is that it uh, avoids endothelial rejection and late graft failure. Timing of intervention is critical. Surgical planning also depends on the extent of involvement. Perioperative antimicrobial therapy is necessary to prevent recurrence. Thank you. Thank you for your patient here.